Have you ever camped at a military campground? No? Well, you're missing out. Come on, let me explain. Hi, I'm Steve Turtle and I'm a work camper and we're working in Concan, Texas down at the Frio River at Camp Riverview. It's a household name. If you're a return visitor, welcome back. If this is your first time here, you should subscribe and ring that bell. If you ring the bell, you'll get a notification. Every time I post a new story, you don't wanna miss one. Last week, Jill and I, we were traveling, traveling to our new work camper job in Concan, Texas, down by the Frio River at Camp Riverview. Now, if you missed that story and you'd like to see it, I'll leave a link right up there. This week, I'm talking about military campgrounds and RV parks, eligibility, how to find them, and a review of a military campground. Who cares? The Military Fan Camp is another name for military campgrounds. It's a great way to travel and stay cheap at some fantastic campgrounds that are secure and close to all the post amenities. Who are the eligible patrons? Well, here's how you find out. Go to the U.S. Army MWR website. Click on Eligible Patrons. As you can see here, Active Duty Army, Department of Army Civilian Employees, U.S. Army Retirees, and members of the Army National Guard and Army Reserve, 18 years or older, are eligible. Family members of the above group with a military ID or a government ID are also eligible. Son or daughter is serving in the military, Mom and Dad can go camping at a fan camp too. Many MWR facilities and services are available to all branches of the service. Always check the staff at the MWR for eligibility. The Purple Heart and the Disabled Veterans Access Act of 2018 expanded access to services and facilities. The act permits more access to service and on-base amenities for the following people. All veterans with service-connected disabilities, Purple Heart veterans, former prisoners of war, primary family caregivers of eligible veterans under certain VA programs. The expanded access includes commissaries, military exchanges, golf courses, bowling centers, recreation lodging, RV campgrounds, and movie theaters. Those that are not military retirees will need to go to the base visitor center with two forms of ID to gain access. If you'd like to read more about the act, I'll leave a link down below in the description area. How do you find U.S. military campgrounds and RV parks? Jill and I, we started our venture on January the 1st. We traveled for 14 days. We looked at our route to determine where we planned to make our stops. Then checked to see if there were any fan camps along the way. We found three. I'll talk about them in just a minute. Now let's go back to the MWR website and I'll leave a link to that website down below in the description area. Scroll down and select the state, then select the campground you'd like to visit. We stayed at three fan camps along our route. Georgia, we stayed at Dobbins Air Force Base fan camp for $20 per night. Mississippi, we stayed at Keesler Air Force Base fan camp, $22 a night. And then our last camp was Texas, Fort Sam Houston Recreational Vehicle Park, $18 a night. And Fort Sam Houston Recreational Vehicle Park did not do a good job at sharing information. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. I would like to talk about one fam camp in particular. It was okay, but I wasn't happy with the upkeep. It was the off season, but if a campground's open, it should be maintained. And this one was not. Let's take a look at Dobbins Air Force Base Lakeside Fam Camp. You will enter at the main gate and they will have to remove the security barriers to allow you entrance. <laughs> Continue down Atlantic Avenue Southeast until you come to Lake Circle. Turn left and just past the tennis courts and the campsites are just ahead. Stop and read the welcome sign. It reads register at the Recreational Retail Center building 558 during normal hours. After hours, fill out a form, drop it in the box. The website said no reservations needed. So we filled out our form, found an empty site, and parked for the night. It also read that it was $16 per night, and that is not true, it was not. It was $20 per night. As you drive into the park, you will see a sign on your left, speed limit five miles per hour, then proceed straight. It is a one-way street, 
and site one will be on your left. They have 18 sites with water and electric and they have a dump station. We were in site number five. It's a large level site. It's a pretty good site too. Each site has a picnic table and a grill. Some sites are really narrow and have lots of pine trees. Others are pretty good and open somewhat. Overall, I did not think that the fan camp was well maintained. There was debris and clutter in some sites and lots of pine needles in and around all the sites. I also found these poor old flamingos passed out on the ground. The lakeside showering facility is located at the entrance and has a washer and dryer and three shower stalls and it looked very clean. Within walking distance is a playground, pavilion and a nice lake and horseshoe pits. The landing at the lakeside and the information tickets and tours office are also within walking distance from the campground. However, due to COVID, the landing at the lakeside was closed. It did look like a very nice place to hang out and had a deck so you could sit and enjoy the view. Verify post access. You must have a military ID to enter the post. If you don't have a military ID, you'll have to go to the visitor center with two forms of ID to gain access. Know your route into the military fam camp. Due to heightened security requirements, many military posts only allow the RVs to go through a commercial gate. These gates are often closed after hours and on weekends. This is a good point. We waited here for 20 minutes as a train passed to get to here and then realized that we were trying to enter a closed gate here. And we should have been all the way over here. <laughs> this information was not posted, nor did the campground inform us. The whole trip was another exciting adventure for us. This week, I wanted to give you a little information and talk a little bit about fam camps. Now, if you've stayed at a fam camp, leave me a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know which one you stayed at and what was your experience. Did you like it? Was it okay? Let me know. Well, that's our story for the week. I hope you enjoyed this story. If you did, click like down below and smash that subscribe button if you'd like to hear more stories like this one. New stories every week on Wednesday, right here on this YouTube channel. And ring that bell. If you ring the bell, you get a notification every time I post a new story. Because you don't want to miss one. Until later, thanks for your time. Bye. Honking my nose. Bye.